I've always had the fascination of retiring in my 50s. I've grown up in an environment where those goals seem lofty, unachievable, silly, simply not going to happen. But I do believe with the right amount of planning, suitable execution and a willingness for sensible sacrifice, it can be achieved. The recent 2022 Gen Z study from Deloitte stated nearly a third of Gen Z don't think they'll be able to retire comfortably at all. And the general consensus online is that majority of people don't think they're going to be able to even touch retirement, let alone retire in their 50s. But I wanted to sit down with you today and share my plan on how I aim to become a millionaire by 55, which will enable me to retire. Now, a million pounds in the year 2055 is going to be a hell of a lot different than what a million pounds is right now. But there are some core principles in my planning that I've put in place to allow me to obviously execute above a million pounds so that my true value is close to a million pounds when I get to that point anyway. Is a million pounds enough to retire on in your 50s? Maybe. That comes down to lifestyle choices, how frugal you are, how well you can manage money, etc. All I can do at this moment in time, 23 years of age, is to plan ahead accordingly. So I'm going to break this down into 10 year increments, 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s. And one thing I've identified so far in my 20s is that there's a lot of experimentation going on. There's a lot of soft failure, something I like to call sensible failure. I've hopped around different industries. Only the last year or so have I become really comfortable in the job world that I have in the industry that I'm in now. And only recently the last year or so could I see myself progress in this industry to a higher level. And I'm very fortunate that at the age of 23, I've been able to get into this position now. But if I was at this exact same point at age 25, 26, I would still count that as a massive win. I've got myself included in so many ventures already, whether that's this YouTube channel, whether that was creating music videos back in the day, whether that was acting as a freelancer, doing some brand consultancy work, building some larger projects with larger budgets. But I do feel like there's so much more experimentation to be done and ultimately lessons to learn. For me, in terms of investing, this decade is simply just to get the structures, foundations and principles set in stone so that I can really execute on them properly in my 30s and 40s so understanding what was important to me personally what was important to me a roof over my head i would love to own my own property and have that property paid off outright by time i'm 50. i also err on the side of being conservative so i have so far in my 20s the last couple of years built up a decent cash reserve otherwise known as emergency savings it's not to say that the cash is going to waste majority of my money so far is invested but i do have a decent pool of cash ready to use in case of an emergency. So because I have labelled property as one of my main goals, that means my investments have to reflect that main goal. In the UK, we have these things called lifetime ISAs, government-backed schemes to help young people get on the property ladder. Essentially, any money I put in is gets a 25% uplift from the UK government alongside capital appreciation if the money is invested in an ETF, for example. So majority of my investment is poured into that fund at the minute because hopefully by the time I get to my mid late 20s, I can start to make that first property purchase. Workplace retirement accounts, personal retirement accounts, all those foundations have been set up, but the contributions to them are minimal at the minute because again, I'm in my early 20s. I'm not gonna be hoarding cash away for retirement just yet. There are some things I need to check off that list like property before we get to that point. Doesn't mean I'm not investing a monthly contribution, but that monthly contribution is very small. So ultimately in my 20s, still very open to failure, sensibly of course, but I feel like there are gonna be opportunities coming up in the next few years as I hit my mid 20s, late 20s, which I could capitalize on to speed up the process a little bit. But ultimately I'm chalking off the 20s as the riskiest decade, but it could also be the most fruitful decade. And again, most importantly, it's just ingraining these practices and execution techniques when it comes to saving and investing into my head so that when I get into my 30s, I can continue to execute, hopefully, on a bigger scale. And the plan for the 30s is just to double down on the execution, whether that includes overpaying on the mortgage to whittle down that debt, investing more into retirement accounts to build a bigger buffer, increase emergency savings contributions so that that bank account balance is a bit bigger because again what comes with home ownership more problems probably if the roof caves in on the property that i own and it costs five grand to repair it i would much rather take that five grand from the emergency savings account than sell off five grand worth of my investments to cover that immediate repair so setting up those comfort structures i think are really important in the 30s because kids would come about i assume the expectations of being a proper adult and the financial burden that comes with that so doubling down on the contributions to these accounts and also building up the comfort structures like emergency savings account are, would be the main goals for my 30s. The main point for my 30s when it comes to money contribution is that my money is going to something that isn't fading away. Mortgage payments are adding to total equity of the property that I own. They're not going to some other landlord paying off their mortgage. Any additional income from any side hustles or business ventures could go straight into the pension account leading up to early retirement. 
difficulties are more of the same, just scaling larger and larger. What could be a what could be a three four hundred pound contribution to the pension? Hopefully by the forties, the mortgage payment is really really low. So why can't I contribute six seven eight hundred to the pension per month? At this point, I would have had 10, 15 years of compound growth in the accounts. So hopefully by the time I'm in my forties, the numbers in these accounts are fairly large. But just because they're fairly large, could be possibly in the six figures, doesn't mean we don't continue to invest on a month to month basis. When it comes to scaling for income, if I remain in this industry and I stay there for what would be nearly 20 years at this point in my 40s, I would back myself to be in an upper senior management position. So hopefully the take home pay is, you know, substantially more than what I'm on now. And that then would reflect on investment decisions because obviously more disposable income, more room for contributing to accounts, hopefully bigger growth by the time I hit my 50s. It's also something about risk, which I find very interesting in your 40s as well, because you're still young enough to take risks. The whole world isn't going to collapse if you, if you do something and it goes wrong when you're in your 40s or even 50s and so there's so many success stories out there of people who have started something in their 30s 40s or 50s and then have gone on to make whole careers and have stupidly successful business ventures from that just because you don't have wealth in your 20s or 30s doesn't mean you're not going to have it in your 40s and 50s so at this point i would hope that i would have some expertise in a certain subject that i could leverage to build a business or to build a more reputable long-term source of income for myself because hey consultants do make a lot of money but you know businesses that you know hire 15 20 people work with some big brands etc make a lot more money in terms of investments as well just because i'm in my 40s i'm not going to dial back invest less in stocks more in bonds i'm still i'm always going to be 100 percent in stocks as they are the highest growth opportunity out there and over these couple decades there will be humongous peaks and troughs but even now money i invested before covid or whatever seen really good appreciation but then since then has had really bad depreciation so i've learned already how to sort of ride that wave and not get emotional over it because the money's still in the account i haven't sold anything i haven't lost anything it just might be a little while before they go back up in price so leveraging a long lasting career into a business venture when i'm in my 40s i think is a plausible opportunity what does open up the opportunity to take that risk and to take that leap of faith is I've worked through my 20s and 30s and you know mid 30s late 30s to build those support structures to make sure that even if this last sort of Hail Mary throw for something special completely and utterly fails I can still take a step back have everything I still have and sort of chalk off that last risk taking attempt as you know midlife crisis now I'm playing as just the last big attempt at something before before retirement comes about when the 50s do roll around that will be the time to have a deep dive analytically to evaluate where I am to understand where we are money wise to understand what what assets we have do we still have any liabilities is a house paid off is everyone healthy do we have long lasting emergency savings and cash do we have investments to, to last us the last 20 25 30 years of our life and what is the plan for stripping back workload and start to actually look into proper retirement now for me retirement doesn't mean just chilling sitting back playing games until I die on the sofa. But what it does mean is that I don't have to show up to an office. I don't have to get a task done by the end of the day. I don't have to appease this boss. I don't have to do anything. But more so I'm choosing to do something. So I could be in my 60s, 70s still working, but I'm working on something that I find valuable. It might still generate a good income, but for me, it's something low effort, something enjoyable for me, something that isn't going to cause longer term health issues, but overall gives me a sense of enjoyment, a sense of purpose, and allows me to use the funds I have been saving for the last 30 odd years of my life to do things I previously wouldn't have been able to do. Ultimately, if I'm not in the Maldives and the Caribbean three, four times a year from the age 55 onwards, then I failed. But that does not mean I just switch off and retire and do nothing. Obviously, if there are some shortfalls, you know, that's when you push goals back a bit instead of retiring at 55, you can retire. 58 or 60 and obviously market conditions we don't know what market conditions are going to be like in six months let alone 30 odd years in the future we could be paying everything with bloody dogecoin by then you just don't know do you probably not though as the mind ages as the body ages you know 50s 60s and 70s i really want to take time to make sure that i can live long enough as possible and when it comes to sort of 60 and beyond i just aim to be living and supporting my ultimate goal is to wake up have a thought of oh you know what i want to go for a hike today no one can stop me i can do it and that control over my own life is ultimately what i'm working towards simply because i don't want to be a grown man and still getting bossed about but i'll share i'll share with you guys sort of one of my main goals is i want to be a community firefighter i would love to I, when i was a kid i always wanted to be a firefighter but i think the ultimate goal is that retiring early 
being this corporate man, blah, 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 he's always in an office, you know, whatever the case is. And then, you know, co-workers look at me like 20 years later, 15 years later, I'm, I'm just this jacked firefighter. Like, it'd be, it'd be so cool. But yeah, just, just something for the community. You know, I, I, I do aim to do more charity work and whatever and to support in what, in what way I can. But I think there are certain things that I can do which gives me more sense of purpose. Because I think a long-standing corporate career can really drain people and it can permanently drain people. Whereas by the time I'm 50, 55, 60, I don't want any of that. I want to be able to, to like I said, wake up, do what I want, but also do stuff to contribute to the community around me, help the people around me. It's more purposeful, it's more meaningful. The connection with people is there. I don't want to always be chasing money. So yeah, there's the uh, the rough guideline I put in place for, for myself to hopefully retire by 55. But yeah, this is just an ode to, to Gen Z to say, don't be worried about retirement. If you do put the plans in place, do as much learning as you can. Because like I said at the start of the video, I, I've had no, no mentorship, no guidance surrounding personal finance or retirement or anything like that I've just figured it out by myself but the most important thing that I can do now and the most important thing any young person can do is just attempt to create a better version of themselves moving forward and ultimately I want 55 year old Martin to be watching this video and be like you know what he did what he said he was going to do he smashed it thank you I'm on my beach <laughs> I'm on my, on my beachfront terrace um, on my at my holiday home whatever the case is but but yeah, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below your thoughts and feelings about early retirement. Is it plausible for you to retire in your 50s? Let me know. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you in a bit.